And welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and we are building janky decks. This is a new series that I'm starting, which sort of goes hand in hand with my Brewing with Underwhelming Commander series, because I realized that my Underwhelming Commander series only concentrates specifically on the commanders, and a lot of times you want to build fun janky decks that aren't necessarily centered around your commander. And I got a lot of fun, interesting ideas for janky decks, most of which I've talked about in my 10 deck ideas videos which I have three of now and which is another reason why I am starting this series because the last one I made I had a poll on it a lot of people voted and it was fairly evenly distributed so were the polls that I had for the other videos so I thought you know what why don't I just make a whole bunch of these right so I'm starting a new series here that I will be doing once in a while where I build these janky interesting ideas like the ones I talked about in those 10 deck ideas videos and we are starting off with the winner from the poll of the last 10 deck ideas video which was the booby trap deck and this was a really challenging and interesting one. And the idea for the deck was to win with a booby trap, right? You know, you, you want to challenge yourself. I mean, yeah, you can attack your opponents with your creatures and with your commander and stuff like that. Winning with the booby trap, though, is sort of the challenge. So what does booby trap do? Well, it's a six mana artifact. As it enters the battlefield, you name a card other than a basic land and choose an opponent. The chosen player reveals each card they draw. When the chosen player draws the name card, sacrifice booby trap if you do booby trap deals 10 damage to that player so 10 damage is a lot it's a lot more in other formats where you only have 20 life in commander of course it's going to be a lot more difficult to close out to the game however we do have some tricks here the biggest trick being our commander which is going to be Sharoom the hegemon as i mentioned in that video there was a couple different ways you could go with this i thought oscar was also an interesting idea for a commander here because obviously when your booby traps in the graveyard you can exile to make two copies but then it gets exiled which makes things a little more difficult i really like Sharoom. Sharoom just allows us to keep bringing our booby trap back over and over and over again also allows us to get it a lot easier right rather than just tutoring for our booby trap now we can use an entomb or some other effect to put it into our graveyard so it widens the amount of cards that we can use to get our booby trap so now we can just chuck it in our graveyard and then when we cast our commander we'll put it directly into play obviously there is a lot that we have to build around here first of all we have to build around the fact that 10 damage is probably not going to kill our opponent unless they're already at 10 life and yes we can bring this back from the graveyard over and over with our shroom that's going to be a little slow copying it is going to be ideal so cards like sculpting steel and phyrixian metamorph are going to be great while our booby traps in play we can create copies of it echo storm and mechanized production also can do this right there's lots of ways we can copy our booby trap echo storm is one that doesn't see a lot of play three blue blue sorcery when you cast this spell copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game you may choose new targets for the copy so hopefully we've cast our commander at least once so that means we're going to get one copy and we're going to create a token that's a copy of target artifact so this is going to give us two copies of our booby trap which is pretty good mechanized production probably even better though if we can just stick this on our booby trap at the beginning of our upkeep we're just going to create a token copy of it if we control eight or more we win the game but we're not going to worry about that part we're just going to keep cranking out a booby trap copy every single turn that we can aim at a different opponent or the same opponent if we haven't killed them off yet. Again, as I mentioned in that video, Magister Sphinx is just perfect in this scenario. Four white, blue, black Sphinx, five, five with flying. When it enters the battlefield, target player's life total becomes 10. This is a card that used to see a lot of play in the format just because you were basically smashing your opponent for 30 damage when it enters the battlefield, which is fantastic. And in this deck, of course, this is an artifact creature. So now all of the copy effects like sculpting steel, we can apply to our Magister Sphinx as well if we want to. This is really going to speed things up. So now it's only one booby trap per opponent if we have the Magister Sphinx in play. And of course, because we're in a Sharoom deck, we're going to be having lots of those blinking effects like Soul Herder and Teleportation Circle. So we can be blinking our Sharoom over and over and over again to get our booby trap back. We can also be blinking our Magister Sphinx so we can make all of our opponent's 
life totals into 10 and kill them a lot faster. Maybe this is cheating a little. Again, it depends how you want to play this deck. I think the finishing blow being the booby trap is really where it's at. You know, you can't stop your other opponents from attacking each other, right? So if you got one opponent with a really aggressive deck attacking another one of your opponents, their life total is going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, there's nothing you can do about that. When they get down to like eight or nine life, then you finish them off with the booby trap. I think that's where we really want to go with this deck. Another really important hitch here, though, is we have to know what's on top of our opponent's library, right? When our booby trap enters the battlefield, we have to choose a card name other than a basic land. The booby trap's not going to do anything unless that player reveals the card that we've picked. So we got to know what's on top of their library. You can just do one-offs like Mishra's Bobble is an easy way to do this. Right before our booby trap enters the battlefield, we can crack this, see what's on top of their library. We just name that card. But the best way to do this is with Lantern of Insight. Each player plays the top card of their library revealed. So now we're always going to know what's on top of our opponent's libraries. Wise and Snitches is another way we can do this. Three and a blue fairy rogue. One three with flying players play with the top card of their libraries revealed. So basically it's doing the exact same thing as Lantern of Insight. And I figured, you know, as a secondary strategy, since we're doing this, since we're going to constantly be knowing what's on top of our opponent's libraries, why not play a Lantern of Insight strategy as well, right? So I put Ghoul Colors Bell in here and Codex Shredder. Since we're going to be looking at the top cards of our opponent's library, if we see something really threatening on top, like a Bane of Progress, that's going to be really bad for this deck. Let's mill it into their graveyard, right? And then we won't have to worry about it. I also got Cathartic Adept in here, which is the same thing. Wanda Denial is a particularly great one. Two mana artifact. You tap to look at the top card of target player's library. If it's a non-land card, you may pay two life if you do put it into that player's graveyard. So we can use Wanda Denial as the Lantern of Insight strategy where we see something we don't like we can dump it into their graveyard or we can just use it to look at the top card of that player's library just to see what they have so we can name that thing with booby trap right we don't have to put it into their graveyard we can just leave it on top so it's a great way to take a peek at the top of our opponent's library i also threw nascent metamorph in this deck again because we're looking at the top card of our opponent's libraries all the time i just thought this was a funny interesting fit it's a card that came out in c20 that doesn't hardly see any play at all one and a blue shapeshifter, one one. When nascent metamorph attacks or blocks, target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. Nascent metamorph becomes a copy of that card until end of turn. Then that player puts all cards revealed this way on the bottom of their library in any order. So I thought this card was a heck of a lot better in this deck where we know what's on top of our opponent's libraries, right? When our nascent metamorph attacks or blocks, we can see what's on top of our opponent's library. So we look for the player who has a big creature maybe on top of their library and we pick that player right we're going to choose the opponent that we want to reveal cards from their library and if they have a big creature on top we can just pick them and our nascent metamorph becomes a copy of that card we can also just stick things on top of our opponent's libraries right for example hinder is a great counter spell in this deck one blue blue instant counter target spell if the spell is countered this way, put it on the top or bottom of its owner's library instead of into that player's graveyard. So if it's something you don't want them getting back, you can just tuck it on the bottom of their library. But we can also counter something, put it on top of the opponent's library if we're going to then use a booby trap on them, right? Because now we know what's on top of their library. Bury in books is a great way to do this. Oust is a great way to do this. These cards will put them second from the top, which can be good to give us a, a sort of a turn to, to get ourselves going, right? If we can't get our booby trap out right away, this puts a card second from the top, so we have a couple of turns to get our strategy in place. Disempower will put an artifact or enchantment on top of its owner's library. Memory Lapse is another counter spell that just puts something on top of someone's library. Submerge is a great one that'll put a creature on top of its owner's library, and it can be free if we control an island and an opponent controls a forest. So this is the other strategy where I see that my opponent has a certain creature in play. I cast my booby trap, and I name that creature and then submerge put that creature then on top of their library so that on their turn they will draw it and trigger the booby trap and i really like psychic surgery in this deck this is a fantastic card that doesn't see nearly enough play i'm gonna have to give it a mention in my 10 cards videos one on a blue enchantment whenever an opponent shuffles their library you may look at the top two cards of that library you may exile one of those cards then put the rest on the top of their library in any order it's a great way to peek at the top of an opponent's library which is what we want in this deck it's particularly 
particularly good against the Mirage cycle of tutors, like Mystical Tutor and Vampiric Tutor, where they're searching for a card and then putting it on top of their library. And then before they get to draw it, you get to look at those cards and whatever they search for, you can now exile it before they can get their hands on it. It's really great at hosing tutors. But that's basically the deck. You know, the deck is we get our booby trap, we either tutor for it, put it in our hand and play it, or we tutor for it into our graveyard with an entomb or an auric lore mage. Then we use our shroom to bring it into play, and we also use our shroom to bring it back into play after it sacrificed itself, right? We gotta be looking at the top cards of our opponent's library so we know what cards to name, we can make copies of our booby trap to speed things up, and we can also use Magister Sphinx to make our opponent's life total 10, so it's an instant kill. Really interesting deck, I think. I'm pretty happy with how this came together. The deck list for this guy is in the description below. Give it a whirl if you like. And if you like the way I build decks, I have a Patreon. The link is in the description below as well. Give it a click if you're interested in becoming a patron. I do all my deck doctors on there. I do my patron deck techs on there as well. And it also helps support the channel. But that is it for today. And thanks for tuning in.